Hey folks, morning. It's Brian with another uh, review uh, session recap of my RuneQuest role-playing in Glorantha game. The campaign is the Chronicles of Kareen, and we are in Chapter 3, A Cavern Crawl. Um, last night was another slog fest. Now, uh, since... Combat and request can be so deadly. Generally, um, as a player and a GM, we have a tendency to try to not do that. But the player in us all, you know, that's what we roll dice, do damage. You know, that's what we want to do. So last night, the uh, or not previously, the party mission been tasked by uh, the Orlanthe Temple and White Wall uh, to uh, clean out this death cult that the party had found. And uh, the party had gone down into uh, the uh, underground uh, temple area. And they had found um, a sanctuary or holy area or something. There were four, five, well, four guards plus one of the scouts. The kid came down and had warned them that the players were coming down the stairs. And so they fought those guys off and killed them fairly quickly, actually. Well, and then they encountered a, uh, it was a dryad, you know, it was a nature spirit, a nymph of some kind. Um, and they attempted to let her out from these bars, the uh, port calls kind of thing that, that she was behind. And so trying to time out, you know, how much time are we actually spending doing this? Um, at about the same time, other party members were investigating the sanctuary, and they encountered a, a spirit which attacked one of the party members. They dragged her out. So I'm still thinking in my head, you know, melee rounds, right? Um, so five melee rounds is a minute, right? Well, a bunch of the other temple guardians had been gathered together uh, and we're preparing an ambush. Well, after, you know, a while, they check and see that the party's not there anymore. And since there's only one other place that the party could have gone from the stairs, they make notification, hey, they're heading for the sanctuary. And so they let some other folks know what's going on and they take off. Well, I'm trying to figure out, you know, how long does it take? Some situations with lighting. Some other things going on. By the time the combat in the sanctuary was over, and the whole deal with the uh, nymph was finishing up, this second temple party made it to the area, and they're using their special see in the darkness thing they have going on um, because the entire hallway was blacked out because the party had put out the uh, torches there, all the lamps, lanterns. <laughs> okay, so the lead guy, the, the lead um, guard uh, gets to the corner. The party's got lights. Lights coming down the hallway. So you can see the guy, that they're there. Um, he hands off his lantern to somebody else. And he goes, one, he takes a peek. Look down there, see what's going on, and one, two, three, bolt. So they all bolt. So the party actually started this game session last night engaged. Um, and if, if you want to watch through uh, the live play descriptions in uh, the description, the link is in the description. So the party is engaged, but because of the way everything was situated, only three of the bad guys could engage with the party. Uh, so he did. And uh, the captain was beaten up on Borak. The other two were beaten up on uh, Engrilar, who's kind of in the center, so it's all focus. Um, but we found out, well, we found out the, um, the GM screen has an error in the attack parry matrix. That I wasn't aware of, but as we were reading through, going, there's something wrong here. 
And so we had to look up in the book, and and uh, it, it's a known issue. Um, one of the players uh, works with Chaosium, and so they know about that. Uh, so hopefully they'll print out a new one, and it would be really nice if they sent a corrected version to all the folks who got bad copies. Uh, so we, what we found out in playing last night is shields and parrying weapons and swords and everything else is going on between the different matrix uh, interactions of, of special or critical parries um, against normal or fatal attacks. Weapons and shields were getting chewed up last night. Um, so we double check some of the rules on this whole thing because, you know, thinking old old school, you break a weapon does half damage. Well, in RuneQuest RQG, if your weapon goes to zero or negative, because it can go negative as hit points, um, which at which point it is completely destroyed. But once it goes to zero, it can still be repaired. Um, your skill goes down by half. Um, and and uh, a handful of these guys are experienced fighters. Um, so two of them are actually fast enough and have a knife skill bonus with, with their, their blade sharp and stuff to be over 100%. So I had two guys striking twice around, one guy striking once. So Angler was getting his hitting, being striked at three times around in order to break down those parries, right? Um, but Vorak got hit uh, in the arm, brought him down to zero, um, and he fumbled, so he's on the ground, he skitters back, um, the guy he was fighting, the, the captain of the guard, is going to move forward in order to block out and provide space for another guy to come in. Well, well the player there wants to move forward to block the captain from taking that space in order to keep him in place. And so we're talking about, how do we do this? Um... I was thinking in the top of my head, some kind of maybe strength plus dex, or maybe just a straight dex contested role or resistance role kind of thing. Um, but we decided to go with the um, the knockback rules. Uh, so a player is active. He's trying to keep the guy from getting in. So it's strength plus size against other guys, size plus dex kind of thing, right? And... Uh, they make a roll and the player wins, so the player moves forward in the hex and the guy's blocked back. But his, his statement of was to move forward and attack. He's not able to move forward, he's still going to attack. Um, so he was attacking that guy, but with all the shield stuff going down, um, at that point he switches his attacks so that Engrilar, the guy in the middle, is getting attacked at five times every round. So his, his parry with either his shield or his sword gets down below where his dodge is actually higher. Although, now that I think about it, your dodge skill is modified by your encumbrance. And if your encumbrance is over your encumbrance limit, it affects it even more. So I'm going have to have to check with him on that. But then, same thing applies to one of my guys. My guy's shield got destroyed. Uh, I'll break down to zero. But at that point... Even if he does make his parry, the damage that goes over the shield, which is zero, goes through to a location, so it's completely useless to, to parry at that point. Um, so, let's go start dodging. In fact, the last round he did. He dodged. Okay. Uh, one of the bad guys uh, does go down from a great hit uh, by the, the Beast of Gore fighter. She... Did I think it was a leg shot? No, it was an arm. It was an arm. Oh, critical hit against, may have been a special parry, but enough went through that took off his arm. He goes into shock. He lost nine hit points. Maybe it was a leg. It was a leg because he had taken one shot, had hit one point in the leg earlier. Um, so amputated the leg. He goes in shock, goes down, incapacitated. Now, the I'm going to go back and look in the book, but the uh, screen doesn't say anything about losing hit points when you get an amputation. But if you go negative in the chest or abdomen or head, you start losing hit points. So I kind of think maybe an amputation, you should be losing hit points every round. Uh, but need to say, he's down. So his buddy next to him sees him go down and wants to move into his spot, again, to open up a space for another guy to come in behind him. 
because they're kind of bottlenecked at this, this hallway in the corner of the room. So she does that same contested thing. Again, she wins by 1%, by the way. 1%. <laughs> Uh, she makes the roll, so she moves in, he can't. Um, and, oh, um, uh, Subutai, the hunter Bowman guy, had, had moved around back, so he was actually attacking the guy that got the leg down as well. But when Borak lost his arm, um, Subutai's got healing too, so he's going to pull back, uh, or I, you know, scuttle back. And with the fumble, he was down for two rounds. Not able to parry the first round, but the guy missed, if I remember right. And um, so he, he goes up to Borak to, to heal. But by the time he gets there, Borak is actually able to get up. And... Does a location swap with one of the players who wasn't there. Um... Player does a, uh, a uh, defend entire round. Starter in 12, he moves back. And Borak's holding his action. So at starter in 12, he can move forward. <laughs> so he moves in. Um, the heel roll misses for like three times. But he finally gets the heel roll working. Um, after Borak gets into place. And he was able to attack. But I don't remember if he hit or not. So at that point... We were hitting 12. We did one more round um, because Borg was able to get back in and, and make some dice rolls. So we've got a bunch, of, well, a handful of shields and a couple of weapons that are at zero or lower hit points. Um, we've got one bad guy down. Um, and Borg had lost his arm but his back up. All not, not too bad. Um, I have been thinking about this whole double double shot thing. It has to do with with the um, chances of getting a good hit. We were playing oh shoot, some Japanese game I remember now. But one of the players, uh, Mike Myers, who uh, has passed on now, his his character. Had nunchucks, which attacked twice around, and he took dual wielding kind of thing. So he was making four attacks around, um, and he was doing that because every time you roll a dice, you have a chance of rolling a critical success. And this was, you know, D and D, so it was a D twenty. If you rolled the, well, it was reversed. Roll the one, you got got a crit. So same way in D and D now. No, because you're adding on, so you want higher. Um, and so. You know, he's got four chances of rolling a one. Now, he's got four chances of rolling a 20 as well, which is a fumble. But, you know, is that worth the risk? Now, with RuneQuest, same applies with the fumble and the crit, although your crit percentages are higher than your fumble percentage. Yeah. So if you had like a 50%, you can crit on like a 1, 2, maybe a 3. Um, but you only fumble on like a 98. Or maybe a 99. I'd have to look. But, you know, it's just 3% versus 5%. Well, it's still three and three. Now that I think about it. But in RuneQuest, you've got a chance for doing a special attack, which is much, much higher than the fumble kind of thing. So you've got, if you're attacking twice around, that's twice you get a chance to roll for a special. Now, your special admittedly is half. Well, I just keep it easy. I just split them, split the percentages in half. So the guy's 100 is, you know, 50 50. I'd say the guy was like uh, 126, I think one, one of the guys was, was 64, oh, 128, because it was 64 and 64, instead of trying to do like 50 and 70 something. Just keep it easy on me. But they got a special category of stuff they can roll that's, you know, is it worth it compared to missing? I'm not sure. I'm going to have to look through that matrix again. Because once they started missing their attacks and the successful parries going on, weapons started going down and hit points. Um, but that was after a special kind of thing, because that's what really hit when the special hit that's when things started dropping in from there, the cascades. Um, as oh, we had technical difficulties last night. One of the players um, 
finally got on about 9.30ish. But one of my other players had to work late, so he wasn't going to be able to play until 9.30ish. And so we had like just a statement of intent for the first round when he came online, so he didn't miss anything at all. Uh, but it was a short session, just three hours. You know, three hours is still a long time, though. Um, <laughs> I was pumping the Mountain Dew yesterday, so I didn't get to sleep until after two. And I'm up at like seven, so I have five hours of sleep. I imagine I'm going to crash sometime this afternoon. Uh, but anyway, so as as there are different downtimes, where we're discussing things and things, and I'm looking through my bad guys because I've got them all printed out. And I realize that one of the bad guys uh, can't be in the hallway with the player's torchlight, and another one of the players has limitations of what he can do as well. Uh, so I had to do a quick shift uh, before combat got rolling too much uh, to bring the one guy back. Which, if you look at the description, you can see see where they are. But um, there was some discussion early on about our 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 our, our, our spirit magic spells still running. And I had written out a whole list of strike ranks on all these guys getting gathered together, how long it takes them to get notified, how long it takes them to get to where they're setting up their ambush, how long it takes for them to realize, hey, they're not coming, how long it takes them to get to the new fight. And, you know, I'm striking out all these melee rounds, right? Because, you know, five melee rounds is a whole minute. A minute is actually a long time if you're standing around waiting. Um, so I may, I may adjust uh, my time pack here because uh, some of the players thought you know our, our battle magic's over or spirit magic is done we need to recast our spirit magic but i said no no it's still up so i may take off some time but i'm, I'm going to reevaluate how long did they actually spend i mean, oh, mean it's a long time to be just you know cranking well try and lift the gates find the wheel crank it open see the girl try to talk to her look inside see the stairs get back out you know Show her the way, hey, you can go, we're leaving it up. Um, and then, okay, she disappeared. You know, put it down. I mean, that whole thing, just discussing it, was like you know, 10, 15 seconds. So, I'll look through that again. I may adjust the time hack. It's not going to be enough, I don't think, to knock out their battle magic or their spirit magic, but their spirit magic um, will probably go down during this fight. Um, I specifically marked this all out because when they got sent up their ambush, they spent their spirit magic, right? So their spirit magic is going to go down soon. Um, but yeah, they've got some room magic going too. This was a party. The party casts shield one on uh, the circle of protection. That's two points of armor and two points of counter magic. It's pretty hefty. Um, but there was one point where Lars, the sorcerer with, with the circle of protection, moved. Yeah, when he took that space, that it dropped two of the people out of their, their bonus area. Um, okay, all in all, uh, a slugfest of a session, not really what you expect with RuneQuest, but it does, it does occur on occasion. Um, I'm going to have to go through the book and compare it with stuff on the screen. I'm going to print some stuff out to make some corrections, and I'm going to have to you know, review the, the combat matrix again, so I became familiar with it, because I know we had to stop one, one point, because I'm looking at the thing saying... Sometimes the attacker weapon takes damage, sometimes the defender takes weapon damage, depending upon the matrix and that kind of thing. And I was getting confused at one point about, okay, I guess through the shield, shield takes a point of damage or shield takes all the damage, or does the damage that goes over the shield get through to the person? Uh, you know, that kind of thing. And, and one of the things wasn't making sense compared to a, a better, better success level. And that's where we found out that the screen is wrong. Um, Put us in the book correctly. So uh, that was something. Another thing popped up is a critical success on casting spells doesn't take any magic points or rune points. Um, I remember at one point trying to look for that in the book, and I wasn't able to find it, so I didn't have it in my head. But uh, one of the players knew that. So uh, when that healing spell finally went off, it was a critical success. <laughs> no magic point loss. Okay, anything else? From last night. Um, no, 
that should be it. Uh, anyway, so I had fun. Happy gaming.